Hey, how you doing? Welcome back. I showed you a few days ago how you could take a PowerPoint animation, turn it into a Lottie and get it into your Elementor website. I'm going to take it further. How about if we try and create one of these squiggly lines? You've seen them on websites, right? And normally you get told you've got to do a bit of JavaScripting or a bit of SVG and a bit of coding, which is beyond some of us. I mean, I'm not an expert coder. But how can we do it? Again, using the PowerPoint animation, I'm going to show you a few tricks of how we can do that and add a scroll sequence so it reverses and forwards as we scroll up and down. So the first thing we're going to do is load up PowerPoint. It doesn't matter what version you've got on the Mac or the Windows, whatever. We've got a blank presentation. I'm just going to get rid of some of these, um, like, you know, placeholders that you normally get. The second thing I'm going to do is actually resize the canvas on here. You don't have to do this. You can leave it at this size if you want. I prefer to have like the square look. So I'm going to go to design, slide size, and I'm going to go to page setup, and I'm going to make this be 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Why have I gone for 20 by 20? No idea. I just thought it sounded good. So I'm just going to do that. What I'm now going to do is rather than drop in a bit of animation or a bit of text and blocks and move them, I'm going to create a freehand shape which when we load up here as a Lottie, or even as a scroll sequence, it's gonna draw it out. It's not actually drawing it, but you'll see what it's doing in a moment. Now, when we go to insert on PowerPoint, we have some options. We could add in some predefined icons. There already are some here. We could get stuff in from Canva as well, or we could draw our own shape. It's easy to assume that you wanna go for the scribble, but that's literally all you're gonna get. A scribble, unless you're very good with your hand and you've got like a bamboo Wacom kind of like um, a tablet pen or something. We're going to use the one here called Curve, not this one. That's called Arc, not the same thing. We're going to use Curve because what will happen is if I um, click and then I drag my mouse. So don't click, click once and then drag your mouse. You'll get a straight line. And if I now click again, I can now start another line. But as I start, it starts to curve and you can see what's going on here. So literally every time I click and I move my mouse a bit, it's going to curve the line. Let me get rid of that. OK, we're going to start that again and do a proper one. Because there's a few things you do need to bear in mind. And this is quite important because we're going to have like the shape reveal itself. Each time we do a point, the next point must not be higher than the previous point. Because if you go down, down, down and then you go up, as it reveals itself, it will reveal the next bit before you've got to it. This will make sense when I show you what we're going to do, okay? Always make sure your points are below the next one. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go over to here, curve a little bit like that. I'm then going to go down to about uh, here. And I'm just, I'm just doing this really quickly, really, to be honest. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being doing any scientific method here, okay? Why do I always say scientific method? It's not like I've got like a, a compass in front of me or like a a seismic chart, but I, I'm just showing you something like that. Okay, now when it's done, hit return. We now have our shape. And you should see that it, it, there's a continuous downward motion. There's no point where it's kind of sliding back onto itself like a loop or a squiggled circle. You can do that, but I don't think it's going to look as good if you do that. Believe me. Right. What we're now going to do is just right click this and go to format shape. This is where we can now start to define it. So is it going to be like a gradient line? You can see that, look, it's going from light to dark. Is it just going to be a solid line? We'll leave it as solid. Uh, what's the width of it going to be? Is it going to be super wide or super slim or small? We'll just leave it as one for now. Uh, what kind of sketch style is it going to be? So if I do this slightly curved a bit more, did you notice that? I could even go for a bit of a scraggy design. It won't do much here because this is mainly like straight line. So we'll leave it as that. Uh, what about the compound type? So we could have, uh, you probably can't even see that, to be honest, compound types, not going to do very much there. It, it kind of slightly doubles it up a bit, but you can't tell because my weighting is small. Let me put the weighting as bigger. Compound now. Can you see that there's a bit of a line there? Uh, and if I was to pick this pattern over here, you're probably, I'm really sorry, you're probably not seeing it very well. Let me just change this to be about 40. There you go. Right. You can see what's going on there now. Let me just undo all of that because I don't actually like the compound effect. I just wanted to show it to you so you, you kind of um, understand what it does. We then also have the dash type. Now, when you're having a line, a solid line is fine, but you might want to also go for something like this. 
or you might go for a smaller dottier pattern. That's, again, you can't see that very well because it's very minute, but you could have a line like that. Now, for what we're doing here, I'm actually going to leave it like that, okay? Just because, no, I won't do that. No, 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 no. We're gonna have a solid line, okay? We'll do a solid line. I love changing my mind all the time. Um, you can also just start to decide on how it's gonna end as well. So when we get to the bottom here, are you gonna have an arrow showing or not? It's entirely up to you, or do you wanna have like an absolute light dot like that? So you have a line and then it ends in a bit of a dot at the net bottom. It's up to you. I'm gonna undo that and we'll just leave it as a line. But there is lots of functionality here for you to do. We then go to file and rather than save or share, which is what you normally might do, we need to export. It's so weird how this isn't spoken a lot more um, within PowerPoint, but we're gonna export this as a movie file. So we hit export, and down here, file format, we're gonna pick MP4. You could go for MOV, but MP4 is a lot better. Uh, width one, uh, 1080 by 1080, I'm okay with that. And we're gonna go for presentation quality. And that will now export. That line is going to take about, well, three to four seconds roughly, and that's kind of done now. Okay, cool. Right, now we're gonna move on to converting this into a Lottie file. So here's the website, the link will be in the description, dead easy. We click choose file, we pick our file, and we're not gonna to touch anything here. Because I have found when you start to touch stuff, it can go wrong. I want you to click encode, that's it. Pick your file and hit encode. When that is done, it will then say, now you can download the file. So just click that and it will download to your downloads folder. So on Elemental, we have a fake dummy page. You imagine you've got your header, you might have text, you know, it depends on your layout. I just got a header and an image. Over here, we're gonna drop in a Lottie, like so, okay? And you're gonna get the Elemental wonderful animation pop-up. We're gonna swap that out for our Lottie, okay? So we're gonna go over here and we're not gonna do an external URL. We are gonna do a media file, leave it as that. What you will find though, is that if you try to drop the JSON into your Elemental or your WordPress media library, it won't drop. You've gotta do it via this process where you upload it. So I click upload and I'm gonna to go to upload files and you're gonna drop in what we've just done. Squiggly line, MP4, Lottie, JSON. Uh, it has MP4 in there because it's picked up the video name and it's brought it over, but don't worry about that. We're then gonna open that and we're gonna hit insert media. That line will now be there. And you can see it drawing, there you go, okay? The trouble is though, it's a bit of a stutter effect and that's where you do have to mess around with the look of it. Go to settings. Decide is it gonna work automatically, click or hover. Viewpoint usually works quite well. And now you're gonna just decide on the speed. So if I set this to be a four, it's probably gonna go really, really quickly now. Uh, sorry, a few other things you might wanna do. If you wanna change the lazy load, if you wanna change at what point it starts and ends, you can. I normally leave that at zero to 100. And if we preview this, you can see it there, it just happened but it was a little bit too instantaneous for my liking. So we're gonna go back over here and I'm gonna drop it down to be about uh, two. And we'll test out how that looks. There is a little bit of trial and error involved here. I, I, I have to be honest about that. Two is way too slow. And, and you're probably gonna say, what, I've got to sit here and do this how many times? You're gonna to have to do it as many times as you need to to get it to look the way you look. But when it works, it works really, really smoothly. And I'm just gonna try and increase that now to be about three. So I've duplicated the section above and I'm gonna duplicate this column as well. Get rid of that one like that. I'm just gonna swap this image out. You can skip the next five seconds if you want because all I'm doing is swapping a few images out. It's nothing groundbreaking right now. Uh, just to kind of show you the effect when we get to the viewpoint. So I think that's quite critical and important for why you're here basically. Let's preview that. So what you now have is your header, you've got your two images at the top, we scroll down here and then we have this effect kind of occurring. You could play around with the timing of it a bit more, but when it drew itself, it won't now reverse back again unless you have a loop going on. So if I go over here and I go down to my Lottie, down here, and I go to settings, I could do a loop. So what it will do, what it will happen is it will draw and then it will kind of reverse back on it. Well, it will keep drawing. We could also do a reverse thing. So what it will do is it will draw and then reverse back up. So if I update that, and we now go over here, when I scroll down, what will happen is it will draw and it will then loop back up. Now it's not ultra smooth, 
I'll I'll give you that, okay? You got to play around with the timing of it a bit more because it is just a wipe effect, but it is kind of going back up and down. What if we want it to reverse when we scroll up? By the way, before I do that, down here you do have render. If I change this to be canvas, it's now going to be a smaller size. So if you want to have this like not taking up so much estate on your page, this might be a good way to do that. Right. But how can we change this? So let's put this back onto SVG. If I go over here to where it says viewpoint, I'm going to change it to say scroll, which is the clue. So look, right now, if I just update this and we go to our page, okay, like so, and I scroll down now, can you see it's, I mean, this is where I just have to mess around with the speed of it because it's kind of a bit blunt at the moment. I, I admit that it is a bit blunt. So maybe it needed a bit more curvature in it or something, but it will now play and unreverse as you scroll up and down. You know, and we're not using any extra plug in here. We're just going up and down. Let me just go back over here. Let's change this to be, in fact, yeah, once you, ah, oh, I know why. So this play speed only works on the viewpoint, uh, on click, uh, on hover as well, but in Borgeon scroll, we kind of lose that. So if we had something a bit more intricate, it probably would work better. However, saying that, we now have an effect here, which you could go away and use and play with. Look, I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow and feel a bit more confident about using PowerPoint and creating some lotty squiggly line effects that reverse and play as you scroll up and down. Take care, I'll see you soon.